In this video, we're going to be talking about MySQL. You may remember from a previous video, we were using SQLite. Now, to sum up the differences between the two, MySQL has different data types. It actually has way more data types than SQLite. It's typically more frequently used as a production database. There are also other nuances such like SQLite has that .db file we had seen. MySQL works slightly differently. You're going to find that there are a ton of differences in the databases themselves, but through Fluent, they work nearly identical. So let's get started with MySQL. So first, let's install it. Now I already have MySQL installed, so my screen is gonna look a little bit different. Depending on your internet connection, this might take shorter or longer to install. Now once you have it installed, you wanna actually run it. So you're gonna type MySQL server start. Mine's actually already running, right? So it's telling me it's already running. Yours is gonna say starting for the first time. Clearly, if start starts it up, if you do MySQL server stop, it also stops. Now we're gonna type MySQL dash U. We're gonna type root. Now this is going to connect us directly to MySQL. What this is gonna allow us to do is actually type statements into MySQL. Let's just check out if we have any databases. So let's type show databases. And you should see that we have some information, performance, MySQL itself, system, nothing super special. But let's go and create a database. So we're gonna create a database and we're gonna call it micro poster. Now notice that I'm ending every line with a semicolon. That is a standard in SQL, so the structured query language, that tells us that a line is terminated. So we've created a database. Let's look and make sure that actually worked. And there we have it, it's there. And now we're going to connect directly to this database. So we're talking to MicroPoster. And why don't we see any tables? Are, is there, are there any tables in there? Nothing yet, but that's to be expected. Now we're not going to do much more with SQL. You'll find that SQL is one of the easier things for you to Google, but luckily we have Fluent, so we don't actually need to spend a ton of time in here. But this is to just get you familiar with it. The one last thing I want us to do, I want us to change some privileges. Basically what this means is that it will allow us to set some access privileges to a user we're going to create. So let's type grant all privileges on our database, MicroPoster, all tables. And we're gonna grant those to a user I'm just making up. We're gonna call it micro. And it's attached to localhost. And then we're gonna give it a password identified by micro. Don't do this in production. This is just for us to kind of look at it. So granted those privileges. And now let's go back to our code. Now the first thing I want us to do is actually, let's grab this file and delete it. We're not gonna use the to-do controller anymore. We're not gonna use to-do.swift anymore. Now, once we start looking at our package.swift, we should realize that this needs to change. It needs to now read fluent MySQL. And this needs to read fluent MySQL. Now what we need to do, is go back to our terminal and run vapor Xcode. So we need to exit out of this. The way that's done is by using backslash Q, exits, gives us a little message. And now we want to run vapor Xcode. This is gonna take a couple moments, it's going to install it, it's gonna take away the original dependencies and add on our new dependencies. Now that everything has been installed, we can actually go and check dependencies, and if we look, wait a minute, this still says SQLite. Now, one of the things I like doing is I like to close Xcode and then just like completely let it build an entirely new one. So let's actually go and do that one more time. So I'm just gonna close it. Let's type vape for Xcode, and what we should expect is that that should be gone. And now if we take a look at our sidebar now, we should notice that it's gone. We now have Fluent MySQL. Now, one of the things you'll find, and we've talked about this before, Xcode may take some time to be aware of dependencies. Usually, all I run is clean, so Command-Shift-K, 
and then Command B to build just to force it to re-index. Now, while this is indexing, let's go and move ahead. So the first thing we need to do is clear out every time we have Fluent SQLite. So let's go in and we're going to write Fluent MySQL. And let's keep looking. So we also need, actually, this is just MySQL model. And if we look at migration parameter, that's going to stay the same. Let's go to token. We're going to do the exact same thing. Fluent MySQL. And once again, MySQL model. Now one last time, just for review. MySQL. And finally, MySQL model. And hopefully you guys caught it one more time. MySQL. So that should have seemed really easy. All that we did was change places where it says SQLite into MySQL. So now let's go to our configure.swift. So first things first, once again, float MySQL. We're going to change this provider. We want the float MySQL provider. And then we need to make some changes. And you could see the Xcode now has recognized that we don't have SQLite. It's not an error for us. So let's try to create a new database. It's not going to be a SQLite database. It's going to be a MySQL database. Let's look at the init method. So it takes host name, host name, user, password, database. So let's do localhost, user is micro, password is micro, and the database is micro hoster. And so now we can pass it DB, and we're going to change this from my from SQLite to MySQL. I'm just going to copy this and we're going to do this in all the relevant places. MySQL, MySQL, MySQL. Excellent. So now let's run this. This will let us know if we've finished everything we expected. So it says build succeeded. We need to watch out inside this terminal, this console, to see if it tells us. So it says that it's migrated. And the migrations are complete. Okay. We could actually go back to SQL and take a look if we're curious. To use our micro poster database. And let's try show tables again. And now notice that we have some tables. Right. So now let's actually test this. Let's go to Postman. Now we don't want to get users because that's just going to give us nothing. Even this tells us something. It tells us that the application works. Why don't we post? We're going to send some information out. We're going to send just some JSON. We're going to send a username. It's going to be me, as usual. Password is going to be MySQL rocks. And let's send it. So we got back a username. That's not super helpful, but it, it does tell us that you know, something went through. So let's try something out. Let's send a get to users and let's send it. And so now we're seeing that we have a user with an ID of one. This tells us that we've actually persisted this user to our database. Now, what we should realize is that that was very easy. We had to make small changes to switch from SQLite to MySQL. And so now what you should realize is that if you ever need to make these kind of changes to your application, it's very easy to kind of just compare and contrast. In our next video, we're going to be taking the application that we've created and we're going to deploy it to Heroku. Heroku is a platform that allows us to very easily take our applications and from our console, send them up to the internet. We're going to actually get a URL that we're going to be able to use to test for ourselves and even send to our friends if we wish.